Hi, welcome to Spider-Man Favorites. Yeah, I said that. Now, I've been a big fan of Spider-Man, even though I haven't really talked about it much uh, on here. That's because Brand New Day happened roughly about around a few months after I... Uh, excuse me, a few months before I started doing uh, YouTube videos. So, you know, I haven't really been talking about it much, except for here and there references. Uh, but I was pretty much a, Spidey's biggest fan from the age of five through Brand New Day. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of my favorite uh, Spider-Man comics uh, of the past that maybe you haven't heard of. So uh, this is a chance to uh, dig through the uh, dollar bins, uh, back issue bins of whatever comic store you work at, and maybe you can uh, find something online. Uh, these are definitely some good old Spider-Man comics that you should check out. Uh, first off, here we go back to... 1979. This is a six-part storyline that was going on in Amazing Spider-Man. It started with uh, issue 195 and went through issue 200. And uh, there's lots of stuff going on here. It first starts off with, um, let's see, this is, the, I believe, the second appearance of Black Cat. This is a two-parter that was, that was going on where uh, she uh, breaks, out, breaks her dad out of uh, prison. And uh, while trying to stop her, Spidey falls uh, and uh, breaks his arm. And his arm is broken through pretty much this entire storyline, actually. This is written by Marv Wolfman. And there's a couple of different illustrators here and there. Keith Pollard and uh, M. Hands. That's his name. N M. Hands. So Manos, the Hands of Fate, did this. Wow. No wonder it's so good. Uh, but anyway, the uh, lead story in uh, the first issue uh, deals with him trying to capture uh, the black cat. Uh, and uh, all she wanted to do was just get her father out of prison so he could die at home instead of in prison. Um, and at the end, it looks like she dies, but uh, we all know better. That didn't happen. And uh, But of course, that was pretty shocking to, uh, like, how old was I here? This is 79? It was probably 8. So I thought she was dead. Uh, little did I know, I know, kids are so naive. It ends, shockingly enough, with a telegram that uh, Peter Parker got it, uh, that Aunt May had died. And uh, that continues on to here. And this was a pretty uh, moving issue for me. It's when I really started to see superheroes with kind of an angst, uh, even though I didn't know what the word was. I, I, I understood uh, that, you know... They are sometimes not happy. This was definitely not stuff that uh, was addressed in the uh, Spider-Man TV shows uh, at the time. Uh, and then it moves on to... Uh, Peter Parker begins to discover that I he thinks that there was a conspiracy. Maybe Aunt May was murdered, or maybe she isn't even dead. Um, and it leads to... Uh, him being captured and thrown in front of the kingpin for a uh, one last fight. Uh, but that's actually not the main story here. Actually, we go. he discovers that the guy who was running the nursing home that Aunt May was uh, living in was Mysterio. And that bastard faked her death. Why? He was paid off by none other than the burglar from Amazing Fantasy 15, that bastard who killed uh, Uncle Ben. See, he had... Uh, came up with this plan because he broke into the place for the, uh, for, uh, because he had heard this old mobster had uh, lots of his like secret stash like uh, hidden in the basement, uh, which the Parkers were living in uh, at the time. So he broke in, shot Uncle Ben, blah, blah, blah. And this was his chance to get the, the Parkers out of the way. And uh, it's a really exciting conclusion. Uh, it's a great story. Uh, this issue, uh, you know, brings it all together, Spider-Man history. Uh, loved it. This storyline really uh, knocked me out as a kid. It's a six-issue storyline. I don't think this is even collected, and that's a crime. It should be. Uh, you should get it. Also, here's Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man, issue 64, the first appearance of Cloak and Dagger. Now, uh... Cloak and Dagger, this is an origin story. This is written by uh, Mantello and uh, drawn by Hannigan. And uh, roughly, uh, they were uh, teenagers who were uh, runaways. And they were kidnapped by uh, these uh, uh, drug dealers who were working for mobsters. And they were experimenting with new drugs. And they were, like, sticking these uh, runaways uh, with uh, these experiments. So they killed 
almost all of them except for these two. It like nearly killed them and then they got superpowers because of it. So therefore they wanted to go and get revenge on all these guys by killing them off one by one. And uh, Spider-Man isn't going to just let that slide. He's going to try and prevent it. Um, maybe bring the bad guys to justice uh, and maybe, you know, try and save uh, Cloak and Dagger. Uh, but they are not interested, so it's a fight, you know, to the finish. And let me tell you, there's something, this Spectacular Spider-Man series had a kind of a more creepy, edgy feel than the Amazing Spider-Man book. And one of the things I really liked as a kid uh, about the Marvel books over the DC books was a sense of realism. And yeah, I mean, it takes place in New York City, and a lot of their books, yeah, while in fantastic stories, they were kind of uh, giving me a sense of the world outside. Uh, and uh, this was definitely an uh, issue I read quite a few times and kind of gave me the creeps a little bit. Uh, very good, very good. Uh, definitely check it out. And how much time we got? That's plenty of time. Okay, and here we are at Amazing Spider-Man issues 229 and 230. Nothing can stop the Jaggernaut. Nothing! Don't even think about it. Uh, not even Kathy Griffin can stop the Jagonaut. Fuck you. Alright. Uh, this is the first time I've ever seen the Jagonaut. Since I was a kid, I was not a big uh, X-Men fan. I just wasn't interested. And um, this is written by Roger Stern uh, and drawn by John Ramada Jr. And uh, I think, let's see, did he have help? Yeah, Jim Mooney did some, uh, some finishes on this. And uh, Roger Stern is, God, he is an excellent Spider-Man writer, and I think he's just completely, uh, he's, compl he's com completely forgotten about. I, th I think he's definitely not a writer a lot of fans like uh, talk about anymore. I think he's com completely underrated. And uh, essentially the story is uh, Madam Web, if you'd seen a 90s cartoon, uh, pretty much the same relationship Madam Web had been giving him lots of advice uh, about his future and destiny kinds of talk like that. Well, one day, uh, Black Tom uh, decides to kidnap uh, Madame Webb and uh, hires the uh, Jagannath to go get her. Uh, and the first issue is Jagannath tearing through the city, trying to get her, and Spider-Man doing his best to stop him. Uh, the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, and the X-Men are all somewhere else, either on vacation or special mission, so it's just him. He's got to stop him. And he actually fails. Uh, Jagannath reaches Madame Webb, and he pulls her out of her chair, and she actually can't live out of her chair, so he can't really take her. So he dumps her and uh, decides to call it a day. Uh, she is she barely survives thanks to the paramedics, and Spidey, in issue uh, two thirty, goes to try and get him, and it basically turns into Terminator. He's doing everything he can to stop him. And he won't stop. And tearing up the city. I mean, he's throwing fucking buildings at him and doing everything he can. And, uh, let's see. And, uh, let's, like, one of my favorite bits is the tanker truck. He just rams him with the tanker truck. It explodes, you know, half the page here. And it does nothing. He comes out Arnold kind of style. Uh, love this issue. Love these two issues. This is exciting Spider-Man stuff. Uh, go get it. Uh, also, uh, I think this was Peter David's first run on Amazing Spider-Man. This is 267, and this is a one-shot called uh, When Cometh the Commuter, uh, sort of parroting uh, Stan Lee kind of titles. Um, this is Peter David and Bob McLeod, who did a lot of Iron Man stuff uh, during the 80s, and he uh, worked on Spider-Man as well. Now, this is back when Spider-Man had gotten rid of the alien symbiote costume, but Black Cat made a black suit uh, just out of regular cloth and material and uh, he was wearing both which I thought was kind of cool I mean why not I mean I wear more than one outfit how about spider-man so he was wearing the red suit and the black suit uh, I actually like that actually I'm not sure why we had to choose um, but anyway it starts off with a uh, friendly conversation with um, uh, human torch and he discovers this guy breaking into uh, the store and uh, the guy, by an amazing amount of luck, gets away from him. Uh, but Spidey sticks him with a spider tracer and decides to go pick him up later when he has a chance. Uh, the guy, unfortunately, 
<clears throat> for Spider-Man lives in suburbia, uh, outside of the city. Uh, so the next day, when he goes to get him, he doesn't have any buildings to swing on or jump on. And uh, he has to walk down the fucking street in full costume. And he looks like an asshole. <laughs> it's extremely funny. This is a great issue. And uh, I highly recommend this. I, I, uh, I, I borrowed this from a friend years ago, and uh, I ended up having to pick up a copy myself. I just love this book. This is terrific. This is issue 267. And last but not least, is probably the best known of the books right here, but I couldn't help uh, but resist. I, I really enjoyed Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, issue 300. This is the first full Venom after, like, uh, teasing us for a few issues in Web of Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man about this creepy guy hanging around and who knows Spider-Man, uh, who, who knows Peter Parker's Spider-Man. This is David Micheline and uh, Tom McFarlane just as they were beginning their uh, incredible run, actually, of uh, about around 20, 30 issues or something like that. Um, the uh, Venom had made a cameo at the uh, end of uh, uh, 299, scaring the shit out of Mary Jane and then getting out of the apartment. Uh, we get the full origin, uh, connecting him to past uh, Spider-Man adventures like the Sin Eater and uh, Secret Wars and stuff like that. And um, this is also when Peter and Mary Jane are kind of like uh, getting their marriage kind of going here and they even move into a better place. Because, uh, I mean, she's got fucking money. I mean, she's a fucking like actress model. She has cash. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Eddie Brock is hunting them down, and uh, he's got the powers of the alien symbiote suit. And uh, let's, this is, of course, hey, Tom McFarlane, back when he did panels instead of full fucking pages, uh, which is what I, God, that's what I hated about his uh, Spawn stuff. It's like, everything was a page. It's like, I know you know how to do panels. I saw you do them, and do them well. And uh, it all leads to an exciting conclusion. This is when Venom was Venom, and an exciting, great character. I loved this Venom. I don't love the wussified, sort of hero, anti-Venom character Eddie Brock has devolved into. Uh, I love my Venom psychotic, creepy, and powerful. And uh, this is the best place. This is the best Venom issue ever. Uh, if you haven't picked it up, you should. Uh, I'm sure it's probably... Con this is traded into a couple of trade paperbacks here and there, probably Best of Spider-Mans and stuff like that. Uh, but it's well worth it. Uh, so I love these. I think you should check them out. And uh, maybe we'll do uh, some more Spider-Man favorites. I was digging through my old collection, and I found a few more here and there. So I don't know. Maybe this will be the first of the new series. Anyway, that'll be it, and push the button, Lindsay.